Ladies and gentlemen, the collapse is here. For those of you that have been following my absolutely fantastic in-depth coverage full of opinions and, and non-facts about my secret information spouts over at Niji Sanji, the greatest dumpster fire on the internet right now, you will be aware that the story is coming to a close. And by close, I mean past the peak of no return. I'm not saying we're not going to be talking about Niji Sanji again in the future. We probably will. However, it seems like the ship is sinking. It seems like there is a hole in the yacht and the hole is the size of an iceberg. You know it's bad when the moistest of Jesus is, is talking about you. And my brother, Moist Critical, dropped the video. The evil company is starting to collapse. Now, I know of Mr. Critical's vast dislike of a lot of the predatory VTuber agencies out there, especially the Japanese ones, because we have talked about it at length in the past. So I'm very excited to get into this, see what he has to say about this specific shithole, shit show, shit catastrophe that's been going on as of late. He is gonna give you the TLDR, so I don't need to do that, assuming you're a new viewer. This is the story on how Penguin Zero destroyed Niji. Sanji. Whenever I see a massive company start to show signs of failure and going down the path of I orgasm collapse, I'm often reminded of the late great blockbuster, God rest its soul. <laughs> oh, please. The pioneer who really did it no, first. No. A company no, but the, the, what? No, how can you compare it to Blockbuster? You see, Blockbuster failed because their service is irrelevant now. Nichi Sanji is failing because they had the worst PR dumpster fire of a decision at all time. He deemed too big to fail, snatching defeat. Uh, from the jaws of victory. Although, okay, that's if that's the angle he's going. Yeah, the too big to fail aspect. I think that I don't think anyone saw this coming with Niji Sanji, except for me, who called it about a year ago in my video, literally that I made talking about Sayu when I literally called it that they would probably be in big trouble in a year. Well, turns out your boy was correct. And since then, there's been a couple other companies that have gone down a similar path, and right now there is a new one pulling oh, a blockbuster, baby. Niji Sanji. <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm just excited that he's covering this because I've talked to him about this in so much length in the past. Oh my God. You you think that he's just covering this because it's public. He ha hates, hates the companies that abuse their talents. Like, you don't understand. He, he has like a management agency himself. Like, I work with management people as well. Uh, I understand the back end of the YouTube entertainment agency system very, very well. The Japanese systems are predatory. So I'm sorry, I'm just very happy. Th this is how I'm celebrating Valentine's Day right now. I'm just saying. Whether or not you're a huge VTuber fan, you're at least familiar with the industry. VTubing is- No, I actually never heard of VTubers. Please explain. It's huge, and it has been what? for years now. No. It's worth- M hundreds of millions of dollars, if not- That's crazy. Did, a lot of you don't actually know this, but did you know that my YouTube channel, Nuxtaku, is actually in the top 10 biggest VTuber channels in the world? Probably didn't know that because it's pretty crazy if you think about it, but it's true. Billions. And in this space, there are two agencies that stand atop the others as kind of the titans of the space. Oh, yeah. It's Hololive and Niji Sanji. The titans. Now, Niji Sanji has an English branch that- so does Hololive. That right now is going through one of the most foul <laughs> displays of mismanagement, cruelty, and just uh. downright terrible business practice I've seen in quite some time. It's a real head scratcher because every single day they continue to dig themselves. Oh, yeah. They have possibly the worst PR team in the history of the internet. I, I have never seen a big company have such bad PR. And the fact that just yesterday, at the time of me recording this, the fact that they got their talent to go on stream and basically be like, so yeah, we know that Selene was terminated and uh, it was a really awful thing and she tried to take her own life, but let's not forget that she didn't get approval before she did a Fall Guys tournament in 2021. Do you think that that's a good look? It's like this company is run by a Voltorb that is obsessed with using <laughs> the move self-destruct. It is just- Dude, I love the Charlie analogies. <laughs> bent on <laughs> burying itself. So I definitely wanted to talk about it now that I'm fully caught up on the situation. Oh, baby. There oh, is baby. so much to go over. There's a really good video that breaks down like the main timeline here. I for... didn't do that. I was in way too much depth. Mm -mm. Don't come to me for, for succinct timelines. Come to me for vitriol and jacking off. What happened? It comes from Mujin. I'll go ahead and uh, play Mujin makes good shit. the main catalyst for this. And then I'm going to actually turn to a series of Reddit comments that were left that I think go over the entire history of the Niji Sanji problem. I don't want to I don't want to spoil or reveal anything. I am working with somebody on a documentary 
on the vast mismanagement of Niji Sanji and how it bleeds into the idol industry. Oh my god, there is so much. Oh my god, there is so much. And that's not even talking about the leaks that I know that I'm not willing to talk about. Fuck, dude. It's gross. Th there is one situation in particular that, that is so bad, is so bad, it makes everything else look like a joke. And then fast forward to what just happened last night or an even bigger controversy just unfolded. Oh, yeah. So there's, there really is a lot to cover and all of it's looking terrible for Niji Sanji, the English branch that is. Now, no, Niji Sanji, uh, the whole, not just the English branch. It looks bad for freaking everybody. The CEO of a three to five billion dollar company just made an apology video and it sounded worse than Yandere Dev. Don't tell me that this doesn't look bad for the company as a whole. When I first was made aware of this on stream a little while ago, I said that I'm not even surprised by it because a lot of these VTuber oh, agencies yeah. have a history of some very terrible things going on behind the scenes. Many of you know I started my own agency for YouTubers yeah. and streamers a while back called Human Media Group. We they saved my ass, by the way. Shout out to Charlie's agency. Human Media Group literally saved my ass. Uh, due to some YouTube uh, dumb fuckery, I ended up having um, a quarter of a million dollars trapped in a bank account that I couldn't access. Very long story. And it was only thanks to Charlie's Human Media Group Group that I was able to actually access that money. I'm just saying that is absolutely insane. Like YouTube was not willing to pay me anymore for my channel because uh, whatever, very long story. And it was literally Charlie's human media group that helped out. That is talent management. When the talent management actually cares about the talent, that is exactly what you want to see. Because Niji Sanji's business model, and a lot of people aren't willing, uh, I, I don't actually know this. Niji Sanji's business model is based on, we will give you Niji Sanji clout and absolutely nothing else, but we own your soul. That That's basically the Niji deal. And if you want to do that, that's fine. You could definitely go for that if you like. I mean, sure, go for it, homie, if that's the type of deal you want. But you have to recognize the predatory nature of it, too. He recently merged with Jimmy Hears group and became Mana Talent group. And over the years, I've actually seen a couple of these VTuber contracts that they were formerly under. I'm not allowed to talk about which VTuber groups I actually do have access to their contracts, but shit, dude, it's most of them. <laughs> and they're like, yikos, yikos! And it is downright evil what some of them were doing to the talent that they manage. I obviously can't get into the specifics of it, but it is some horrible stuff that some, some really bad stories and bad things that we saw from that. But even being familiar with some of the horror stories that we'd learned over the years from some agencies, I was shocked to see just how bad Niji Sanji was here. So I wanna focus more on the most recent stuff that just happened, but I still would like to give you a foundation for what started all of it. So for that, I'll turn to this clip from Mujin's video that breaks down this whole situation yeah. and just give you the catalyst. This was the the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand fundamentally that kicked <laughs> off this world. Dude, and by the way, the fact that uh, Charlie is like this vitriolic against VTuber companies, but it's crazy. It's crazy that he voice acted the, uh, the fucking mythos thing. Get ready to fuckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, because in a realm where right. ancient- So the, the mythos VTuber group that's voiced by Moist Critical, fucking crazy. They're actually debuting a new talent tomorrow, I believe. Apollo. So, uh, anyway, all in all, like, dude, man is so in the know of everything. Moist Critical is just him. ...of war against Niji Sanji, all of which they brought upon themselves by oh, yeah, being yeah. just complete, yeah, unreasonable, yeah. evil assholes. It all started on Christmas Day, oh! a day you're meant to enjoy with family. Right. <laughs> it couldn't... Listen, listen, you assume we're not all alone. ...have gone worse. The trigger for this entire catastrophe? A music video. Oh, yeah. Selen had worked on a music video for her fans. She paid $15,000 out of her own pocket because Niji Sanji wouldn't fund it. And on top of not funding it... So, uh, again, this falls very into the, the line of what I've been saying until now. Niji Sanji's deal is we give you clout. You do everything else. We are not going to fund your project. We're not going to help you with your shit. We're not going to do literally anything. The only thing Niji does for you is give you the clout starting gun and that is it there is nothing else that niji supplies to their talent which is what makes it such a toxic relationship between talent and corpo because you'd think that the corporation would help them with projects and with funding and all that but but they don't what do they do <laughs> they take down the video in under 24 hours no explanation to the public 
Remember what I said about corporations and how they have access to all social media of their VTubers? Yeah, that's what happened. And she couldn't do anything about it. All she could well, realistically- yeah, they own the talent. I mean, that's, again, that is the contract that they're signing. Yes, it's predatory in some ways, for sure, a thousand percent. But, you know, there are two parties that are consenting to this business deal. This is me being as charitable as I possibly can when I say that this isn't even the bad part. <laughs> the fact that they don't help the talent and the fact that they uh, can private the talent's stuff and, not, and lock them out of their accounts, that's not even the bad part. That's just the... You know, average predatory practice that Niji Sanji likes doing. ...stically do under the very tight contracts and NDAs of a corporation is make up a vague tweet, sort of explaining what's going on to her fans. Celine was a VTuber that was very popular and was with Niji Sanji's English branch. And she had a history of being super, super involved in her community. Yeah. Uh, we, she called so involved in her community, she spent over the last couple of years... I think over one year, she spent over $200,000 of her own personal money to, to make events and, and shit and art and stuff for her community. She made zero revenue over the last year working with Niji Sanji because she wanted to make all this stuff, but the actual company that's worth $5 billion, you know, wasn't willing to help. <laughs> so she ended up spending it herself. Oh my god, that's insane! And she wanted to do a special music video for the community and yeah. paid $15,000 out of her own pocket to make it happen. Which for is fucking insane. For the fans. Yeah, And awesome. she posted it, yeah. thinking that it was totally okay to do because... Uh, again, I'm trying to be as, as freaking uh, unbiased as possible, even though I am biased and don't like Niji Sanji for being a predatory company. However, she knows that she didn't get full confirmation from it and still posted it. Uh, again, not at all an excuse for Niji acting the way they did. Not at all an excuse for Niji's structure to be the way it did. Not at all an excuse for Niji not only not making her pay for with her own money and not giving her confirmation for days on end, all of that is absolute garbage and unacceptable. The fact that she got permission from Lily Pichu to make that song two years before posting it and still didn't just get the okay from Niji's ta uh, talent management, that is all horrible. However, let's not make believe she thought it was okay. I'm just trying to lay out the facts as, as well as I can here. Because she self-funded it when Niji Sanji declined to. Gross. But they made a Gross. big stink about it and took the video down, even though she had permission for the song that was used and even though it came from her own piggy bank instead of theirs. Yeah, by the way, uh, tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, based on the call that Vox, uh, Alira, and Ike did, that the Niji response, uh, and this, this I say is tinfoil hat, but I really believe this is the case. They told Selene, it, maybe it was a uh, copyright type situation. They wanted the public to think it was a copyright problem, but that was fucking horse shit. It wasn't a copyright problem. It was the fact that it had a talent that already graduated from Niji Sanji, and they, it, and it, that was the reason why they didn't want it out. I think I, that's my belief of it. I don't think it's a copyright thing at all. I think they just lied because they're they're fucking lying shit bags. The the entire company is. They they have zero moral qualms about lying to the audience. They tweet from talent accounts making believe it's the talent tweeting them when in actuality it's not the talent. I like that it didn't get the proper approval through the internal management. Because the way Niji Sanji runs their company, it's, it's with a fucking iron fist. You need permission to fart on stream as a VTuber <laughs> under that agency. <laughs> and so dude, it's just, dude, Zion was a VTuber for Niji Sanji. She made a these nuts joke. And Niji Sanji told her, you're not allowed to say these nuts because these nuts is a copyrighted brand. Since she didn't get all of the proper channels to sign off on it, they took it down. Which, of course, was a huge hit to sell in and her community because they worked very hard on that project. Yeah. So she made a vague statement explaining that, well, management took it down. Which is true, but management doesn't want the truth out. That, that's, that's a very important point you should recognize. The truth is not important for management, which is why it's literally in their contracts that if they terminate you from Niji Sanji, you are not allowed to even acknowledge that you used to work for them! Which is why when uh, Sayu made a response talking about uh, Zion's leaving Niji Sanji, Sayu was Zion. By the way, I'm allowed to say it. They can't sue me for it. I never signed any of this shit. Um, Sayu was Zion, and Sayu's response video to all the drama needed to be, Zion didn't know she was making a mistake because she wasn't allowed to acknowledge that she was actually that person. It, it, they do not care about the truth at all. They don't want the truth to be out at all. 
It's not just an iron grip on, on the content that's being produced. It's an iron grip on the lies that they are farting out into the public. But she actually encouraged her community to re-upload it uh, across the platform because she wanted it to live on. Apathetic Gamer, thanks for the gift, it's up. And she assumed that would be okay because, you know, it's not on her channel anymore. So they... Again, I don't think she assumed that would be okay. Um, but at that point, I don't blame her for doing something that she thought was not okay. Because Niji fucked her first. She shouldn't have a problem with it, but they did. This soured relations between Selin and Niji Sanji, and behind the scenes, it led to a lot of harassment and bullying from Niji Sanji against Selin. Because out of nowhere, on December... Dude, that jump scare, oh my god, it's so loud. <laughs> 27th, she tweets on her account, I apologize for the silence. I have been in the hospital after an accident and will be staying there for a few days to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. Now, if you're ready for the, the really insane um, tinfoil hat theories, they claimed that they removed her access from this account before this tweet went out, which heavily implies that Niji Sanji themselves made the tweet I've been in the hospital after an accident. So this is management tweeting, it seems like. Okay, again, allegedly, this is not actually confirmed. Uh, this is not a thousand percent confirmed. But when you read a tweet like this, I apologize for the silence. I've been in the hospital after an accident and will be staying there for a few days to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. The fact that this is incredibly likely management tweeting is fucking horrible. And the way they figured this out was this apostrophe is an apostrophe that you write on a Japanese keyboard. If you write it on a American or Canadian keyboard, it's just a line. How crazy is that? For a few day to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. Now, of course, people were happy she was out of the hospital, but the concern was still there. It was very vague and people didn't know what was going on. The Selen Tatsuki termination notice. Oh, yeah. I will not be silenced anymore. Oh, my God, dude. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Voice critical fucking Frankenstein this video. He's just yoinking parts here and there to just play it. More. On December, I was hospitalized for an attempt that was caused by a buildup of bullying from within and being in a toxic and poor environment for numerous months that led to my breaking point. I requested to leave first, but on more neutral terms, on the 26th of January. Yeah, so I'll tell you some very personal uh, information that I have that isn't public info. There are people in the past that were going to leave and were going to be terminated by Niji Sanji, but had to engage in an actual lawsuit with them so that Niji Sanji will announce that it's not a termination, but it's a graduation. And it was literally only due to legal reasons that they left on good terms. They were going to say, throw them under the bus with a laundry list of crimes. Uh, however, they didn't because of a literal lawsuit. This, this is an actual situation that happened in the fact with someone that I'm not going to tell you who it is because... Again, I don't do the leaking, but this is just to put you in the headspace here. Obviously, I chopped this up and Frankenstein together. Never gonna beat the pre-watched allegations! <laughs> he used the word Frankenstein. There's no way! There, this little segment to give you a very concise timeline. So, Selen made a post about how she's going to need to take some time away yep. after an accident yep. that landed her in the hospital. Everything yep. was very vague. Eventually, she explains that she's been discharged from the hospital. And then shortly thereafter, Niji Sanji English Branch announced the termination of Selen Tatsuki. The termination oh, letter dude. is very poorly explained as to why she's mm -hmm. exactly being fired. Yeah, because you see, they have to, it's very difficult for them. Because you see, there's no real reason that's understandable to fire her. So they have to be vague and make shit up. Because if they don't make shit up, well, then there's no reason for doing what they did. So of course they have to make shit up. Well, the good news is they have in their, in their contracts that she's not allowed to respond. And she's not allowed to actually set the record straight. So... It becomes a lot easier to lie when the person you're lying about is legally bound to not saying anything. Now, poor Doki is in a freaking legal battle with them right now, so it looks like it's going to be very ugly. But for the most part, Nichi Sanji's been able to get away with this because in their contract it says, when you get kicked out of Nichi Sanji, you can never, you know, allude to the fact that you were part of Nichi Sanji. So for them lying when someone gets terminated is the most basic maneuver because the person you're lying about cannot actually even respond and set the record straight. And the crazy thing is, not only has it been working for years, but I've been saying it for years, and then the freaking the, g g g Nichi Sanji fans have been up my throat and down my aorta for years. Now, when it comes to VTubers, there's two ways that departing a company goes. One Dude, is a graduation. I absolutely love Charlie. Dude, this man knows so much shit. Graduation stream where 
they graduate from the company and it means that they are leaving on good terms. So they have like a big send off farewell stream yeah. and that's the end of it. Sail yeah. off into the sunset, sunshine and rainbows. It's a happy ending. You get the good ending. Or there's this, where you just get publicly terminated and just fucking slapped down by the company like this. And in this case, obviously, Selen got the latter, where they just said, she's gone. Oh, the craziest part is they said she's gone, and that's that's the first time she heard of this, too. The fact that she was notified that she got fired from a company because her friend said, have you seen the tweet firing you from the company, is fucking crazy. If you're not familiar with VTubing, when you sign with an agency like Niji Sanji, they basically own you. They give you your VTuber avatar. Like a Valentino reference. They own all of your socials, your channels, everything. You are unable... So again, that's not every VTuber agency. Uh, specifically, Nichi Sanji and Hololive take this to a massive extent. It's not every single VTuber agency. That's important to note. Able ...to operate with any type of autonomy. You are under their thumb and they basically own all of it. Makes sense so, she lost access to everything here, and she actually didn't even know she was being terminated. She found out when this tweet dropped. They didn't even notify her. And the tweet, again, is very poorly explaining things. They, they talk about selling, like, it's a fucking <sighs> Ikea furniture tutorial on how to put it together. It's just like talking about a bunch of nonsense about authorization flows not making sense and, <laughs> and then they cite like the I, I love how on the nose he is he's so right dude and the fact that you have someone like mr critical talking about this shit like it's over like this is the nail in the coffin he is destroying this company people don't understand how how much weight this this goober just sitting on his chair is saying gooner words and and crush and, and it's it matters it literally matters it was all brand shit and the craziest part is the ceo's apology video was i apologize for using the term negligible it wasn't negligible you see we actually lost 18 percent of our company's value a Five billion dollar company. I'm not a major fan of these JoJo, but at least they appreciate that they let their VTubers keep their IPs. Well, I mean, again, it's a very different structure. The people that join VJoJo are existing VTubers with huge fan bases. They would never sign the contract if VJoJo keeps their IPs. And also, by the way, VShoujo likely does keep the IPs of the actual models that it makes for the talent. That's very possible. So, again, every company has its ups and downs, but Niji Sanji, you could join Niji Sanji if you're a nobody and you pass the auditions, whereas V Shoujo is only going to accept you if you have a massive brand. Every company has different uh, different strategies and a different structure, uh, and Niji Sanji's structure is um, is called the fuck-off structure. It's where they, uh, they hire you, they put you in front of a fan base, and then they fuck off. Problems for them, this and that. It was just fucking stupid. A bunch of dirty barnacles. And then Selen went to her original account, her original brand of Doki Bird, to explain what actually happened is that due to the harassment and bullying and the toxic environment Niji Sanji created, she made an attempt on her own life and landed in the hospital. Which is a very human thing. Uh, and the fact that Niji Sanji is still just talking about this like numbers looks at fucking Selen almost killing herself and being like, Beep boop pop! VTuber termination b broke the rules in terms of conditions. They let Nazuna keep the IP of their model they gave her. That's honestly awesome. That's awesome that Bishojo did that. Luckily, she survived and is still with us today, but she no longer would be silenced by this company and bullied into being silent. So she started to explain what happened behind the scenes that led to all of this stress and all of these problems. She lawyered up and is engaged in now oh, yeah. a legal battle. Very ugly legal battle. With Niji Sanji, presumably, that is being worked on. And that is where all of this really started. That's when the floodgates opened. And with all of this information out there now, people were able to go back to some previous Niji Sanji talent with a finer tooth comb and see that the signs of a sinking ship had been there for quite a while. Signs of a company that mistreats its employees, signs of a company that is mismanaged and just downright diabolical behind closed doors. Diabolical! I Sorry, I hear Billy Butcher every time I hear that word. I want to go over that. Because we have a lore master in the comments section Yo. of a live stream fails clip <laughs> that I think does an extraordinary job of just laying all of this information out. So our guide is Weebshitter69. Oh, dude, now that's that's a name I would trust. A, a great name for a, a great <laughs> philosopher. Oh my god, oh my god, dude, stop. So Weebshitter starts by explaining what Niji Sanji is and how big Niji Sanji is. And then takes us back to the past. March 10th, 2023, 
One of Niji Sanji's newer talents, Zion Lanza, was terminated, which again is being fired, yep. publicly, and then put out this bullet point list of the infractions that they accrued. <sighs> Dude, the Zion shit was so much worse than, than... I mean, obviously, I don't want to say it's worse than the Selene thing. How can we compare when Selene almost did something unthinkable but what they did to zion sickened me so much that's when i like gloves off never wanted to collab with niji people after that so much again i i don't lump the talent in with the company but i've just been so turned off from the entire situation ever since then and i i've like i've done my best look look i've supported zion literally the entire time when she got banned originally and they laid out their bullet points of all the awful shit that Zion did, like, I immediately messaged her to make sure she's okay and stuff and whatever. Uh, everyone that gets into drama at some point, when it first happens and, and the world starts collapsing around you, everyone wants to apologize because you feel like if you just apologize, you'll make things right. I think there is a part of Zion that wanted to do that as well and uh, just be like, I'm sorry, like, please forgive me because that's what people, that's the knee jerk reaction. And I, I, <laughs> I told her, don't you dare fucking apologize. <laughs> don't you dare apologize. You apologize, you'll never be able to take that back. And at the time, people sided with Niji Sanji, but then stated that Not the everybody. way they- Not everybody. Not everybody! You got your boy over here! I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I, I dropped the video- I'm just saying. They handled it was a little unprofessional, especially coming from a multi-million dollar company and multi just- Multi-billion dollar company. Just overall, not great. But since Zion no longer had access to their accounts, she returned to her original account that she had before joining, which was Sayu Synchrosity. Now, if you've followed this story for a while, Synchronicity. Oh, you've probably seen this meme tossed around about Sayu was right, or Sayu trying to warn us, and this is what they're referring to. On that account, she revealed more information about her own experiences inside the company, hinting at a toxic environment, incompetent management and bullying, stealth suspensions, etc. And she further stated that she hopes other talent realize their own worth and that they deserve better. Some people sided with Sayu, but most... <coughs> didn't at the time. Then in May of 2023, Selin Tatsuki hosts a contest letting her fans design her next outfit. Niji Sanji management tried to put a stop to the very act of competing or compensating the artists for their designs, while also trying to assert that artists who enter the contest should hand over the rights to the artwork for free. Selin refuses this notion and pays the winners out of her own pocket instead. She, a while after that, hinted that management no longer allowed her to organize events anymore. What the so stupid. Again, ma this, this, this is the, the Niji Sanji management manu maneuver. We will give you an audience and we will not help you with anything. In fact, we will hinder your creative visions in every possible way. Like, dude, what is... I'm telling you, they, this is like the dark ages of talent management. This is the worst and most decrepit crevices of the idol industry in Japan. Which sounds about par for the course for a company like Niji Sanji, where July 8th of 2023, Nina Kosaka graduated, meaning they left on good terms, bye had bye. a farewell bye stream, bye. but then comes back later with V Shoujo, which is another VTuber agency, as Matara Khan. Uh, that, that information will be pertinent later. August 27th of 2023, Mista Rias also graduates, saying that he was burnt out and no longer had any drive, and reappeared shortly after as K9 Kudo as the first male VTuber in v, v Shoujo. Dude. Again, information that'll be in important here soon. Once they settled in, state yeah, it, it's it's insane. Uh, whoever jumped off this yacht before it completely sank, <laughs> they really did so well. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just saying. Listen, if anyone from Niji Sanji wants someone to talk to. And again, lips sealed. I don't leak shit. You know I don't leak shit because I could have gotten clout out of leaking shit over this one drama alone. <laughs> All right? Lip sealed. If you have someone you want to talk to, you want to ask for advice, you don't have to listen to it all. I won't even say that we spoke. You can reach out to me and I'll do my best to help. Uh, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think you are to be blamed by the missteps of your company necessarily. Uh, I do, however, stand by my metric saying that one in four streamers are bad people. So chances are... 25% of you are, are probably assholes. <laughs> no offense. But if you want to reach out, lip sealed, go ahead. Feel free to do so. Statements from both of them saying how surprised they were that management and V Shoujo were actually helping them achieve their creative aspirations started to come out, and how they finally feel like they have worth after being repeatedly told by some that they did not. Strongly echoing Sayu's previous statements, even revealing that they did Damn. not receive the YouTube plaques on their own channels now, during this is old news, but it's insane during their time in Niji Sanji, but rather that the company kept them. The fact 
that Niji Sanji, it, it, they are such, like, wildly controlling, manipulative people that they weren't even giving the YouTube play buttons to their talent is insane. Like, this is a level of egomania that I could have never comprehended before. The CEO just sits there every night on his throne of gold and silver play buttons. Why would he not give it to them? It's not even money. You're like, you can't do anything with it. Niji Sanji kept the plaques from the YouTube channels, meaning the 100,000 subscriber play button or the gold play button for a million. The talent didn't even see. I think the reason why not is because it looks like they own it and they're like no 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 we own you let's not forget that we own you <laughs> we own you and and doesn't not even willing to give them an inch a fraction of ownership over their channel now while sayu was a relatively new member of niji sanji at the time nina and mista were considered cornerstone thus the tide started to slowly turn and then they jump a bit forward in the timeline and that's when they fast forward to the sell-in Christmas catastrophe with the, the music video that got taken down by management. And then in January, with the departure of Pomu Rainpuff, more Bro. people started to wonder how bad things were at Niji Sanji. Pomu Rainpuff was one of their biggest VTubers and shocked everyone when they announced their graduation. Yeah. And it was even more shocking when people didn't hear from Selin since they were friends. So that's when people started to worry about her safety. And then in February, another liver named Kyo Kaneko announced the graduation, which again brought the community into an uproar, wondering yep. why is there so yep. many people departing all yep. at once here? Is there like a yep. waiting list like this mm -hmm. fucking purgatory or something with people waiting to go to the other side? And then on February 5th, Niji Sanji released that termination notice. And that's when Doki Bird talked about what actually happened with her hospitalization following her unalive attempt that was built up from the stress that Niji Sanji put upon her. I think the saddest part of this Niji Sanji situation for me is the fact that I, none of this is even a little bit surprising. Like, I wish it would be remotely surprising, but it's just not. It's like, this is how they've been operating for years. And uh, it's just inevitable that the House of Cards is going to fall down. And a lot of information started to come out, both from artists and other people who had previously worked with them, claiming that Working with Niji Sanji was never very good. There was delay in payments, NDAs being sent multiple times with the wrong name, just oh, so yeah. many different things. Oh, yeah. But Celine had Crazy. always paid the artists out of her own pocket during this period of turmoil while trying to work with Niji Sanji. And following all of this new information coming to light, the public was understandably outraged because this is just some deplorable yeah. garbage. And it leaves the public to sit here and wonder what is Niji Sanji doing for these talents? They're taking a massive cut of the revenue. They're taking 98% of the merch sales. What do they do? They're, they're not even paying for the art or the projects that these talents are doing. They're they're cucking them around every single corner, stopping them from, from doing literally anything, stopping them from playing video games, stopping them from saying these nuts, stop it, controlling their freaking motor functions. It's like the weirdest breath play a freaking BDSM situation in the universe. Like, we have to tell you when you're allowed to breathe. Like, what is Niji doing for them that's positive? The answer is the platform. Uh, but that's literally it. They give you a platform and they control your life. The dam broke and they were flooded with tons and tons of angry fans. The tornado... I am not... I don't count. I was never a fan, so... I am just an angry, chaotic overlord watching from the sidelines at something that he knew was inevitable because karma is fucking awesome and has a machine gun. Blew through and picked up 500 septic tanks and the shitstorm that came- Dude, I knew he was gonna say septic tank at some point! Th that doesn't count as pre-watch. He always says septic tank, okay? He always says septic tank, it doesn't count as pre-watch. Don't say pre-watch. And with it was something that Niji Sanji couldn't have possibly predicted. So Niji Sanji's sta like stakeholders started to suffer. They lost several sponsorships because of all of this. Apparently their their stock price, like their valuation or whatever, started to plummet. Their stock price dropped 18% in the last week. Now, they don't care that Selene almost killed herself, but you see, this sucks for them. <laughs> a lot. Well, it was a huge hit to their company, and it only contained- I mean, I, I, I said this at the end of my last Dream, but I'm going to say it again because it's horrible. And I think that it's a level of horribleness that I think would be important for people to recognize how I think of them. I think they would have really wanted Selene to go through with committing on a live. I think they absolutely would have preferred that. Like if you would ask them, maybe they would say no, but they absolutely like for them, that's just a better bottom line. 
And it's fucking horrible to even can, can think about something that evil and shit. But I really think that you have to understand where I think the headspace is at. This is the, for me, that this is the worst part, okay? For everyone, it's the lack of management and shit. For me, the lack of management is the oldest news in the world, and every time I said this, Niji fans would come down my throat with fucking chainsaws and jackhammers upset at me for, for you know, hating on their favorite multicolored company. Continues to get worse by the day. So, Celine revealed that she had spent like $250,000 of her own money on projects throughout the last year there, so she made no profit. And a very interesting piece of information that people brought up is that in December of 2022, Mr. Rias had a slip of the tongue revealing eh, that eh, talent eh, only gets eh. 1% of merch sales. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And other reports stating that it was a whole 2%. And this serves to showcase that Niji Sanji doesn't just harass and bully their talent directly. No, no, They no. also financially fuck them. Don't say fandom. Don't say findom. It's like the financial domination OnlyFans shit. That is downright criminal. Only giving 1% or 2% if they're feeling gracious <laughs> enough of Oh my god. Merch. And VTubers move so much merch. They move so much merch. They take 2%. They can let them have 2% of merch sales. And I saw a couple people defending this. And let me just go ahead and take you in real quick because it looks like you blew in from Stupidville. <laughs> that is unacceptable. <laughs> yes, the V2... Well, technically, they signed the contract, so it's okay. Listen, listen, listen. It, that doesn't make it a good deal. It's like I could sign a contract to, to let me freaking, you know, sex traffic you, but that doesn't make it a good deal. Ubers here don't actually own their avatar or anything. That does belong to Niji Sanji, and they signed the contract and agreed to that. But without them, that merch doesn't move. They oh, are yeah. still the sole force for why that merch Dude, Not only is that the only freaking... The only reason why Niji Sanji has a fan base is because of the talent. The fan base is the talent. You think anyone cares about the CEO and managers of Niji Sanji? No one knows these people exist. Every penny they make is through because of the talent. Sells in the first place thus should be compensated fairly. If they don't make that tweet about the merch being available, if they don't talk about it on stream, zero people buy it. And to only give them a one or at most 2% cut of that is just laughably pathetic and just de it's just depraved and, and, and the wildest part is I, okay listen again i don't want to get into this because i'm afraid niji sanji's gonna <laughs> be even more upset at me than they already are <laughs> like, like and what's hilarious is niji sanji's blacklisted me in the past and here i am here i am here i stand upon the bones and rubble of the fallen foes oh you really tried blacklisting me oh <laughs> I'm sorry, anyway, uh, but any, I'm just gloating a little bit for too much here, but I have convinced people out of joining Niji Sanji in the past. <laughs> like, I have done that. I've literally done that. And I've been like, look at the contract, what are they giving you? And they're like, I don't know, but it's Niji Sanji. I'm like, no, don't do it. Really? And this also led to a meme that you've probably seen if you've been keeping up with it, about how Niji Sanji's CEO was too busy on his yacht that he built on the back of his talent yes, through sir. exploiting them financially. See, the yacht actually floats on the gold and silver play buttons that he uses as paneling. It comes from this, this, like, this information, where apparently the CEO had flexed that he had a yacht that he had recently purchased or something. I, I didn't look into that too deeply, but I keep seeing that pop up everywhere with people citing different sources for it. Sink the yacht, source! I made it the fuck up! I believe that that's probably something that happened because- The guy's worth a billion and a half doubloons! Okay? <laughs> it's believable. Because they are legitimately just exploiting their talent here. This is a completely unacceptable split. Under no circumstances should this be allowed. That is crazy. And what's even crazier is I know oh, they're not the oh, only oh, oh. ones that do that to they're their not. talent. I sent Charlie a few months ago a whole write-up uh, with a lot of research that was done about um, idol companies, VTuber companies, including Niji Sanji and Hololive and... Like I sent him like a whole thing on that. Dude, I feel like, I feel like, okay, I'm obviously imagining this and this is parasocial relationship talking because I love this man, but I feel like I'm the little devil on his shoulder being like, <laughs> oh no, oh no. Face, I have seen some very unfair deals. Now, not this bad, I, I will no, say- No, no, the 2% merch sale, that's the worst deal in the history of deals. This is exceptionally horrible. Yeah. But I wasn't surprised to learn that when I first saw that they take 
98% of merch sales. Only 98. They could be taking 99. I'm just saying, like, the benefit of the doubt here. They could have been worse. It's because these VTuber agencies look for every possible way, at least, the, at least the contracts I've seen from some of them, to squeeze every dime possible out of that talent while not letting them get the lion's share most of the time. I, I'm having to tiptoe around this yeah, a little bit because yeah, I don't. Yeah, you don't want to get. They're gruesome. It's a gruesome situation that every time someone talks shit about you, they okay. Am I? I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but allegedly, it's possible. Niji Sanji had caught a fan shitting on their uh, design on Twitter, and their Twitter handle had their personal information, and they sued them. What a troll! Like a, a, a random Twitter troll. They actually sued them. Allegedly, maybe. Uh, and uh, the fact that this stuff keeps happening is insane. No, I, I don't want to get in any hot water with it. But yeah, it fucking sucks. That is awful. Now back to the Weeb Shitter archives here. Yes. Weeb Shitter then talks about what happened last night, which is what I want to talk about as well. So, the clip that he is referring to is Doki Bird was streaming. She has now come back to streaming trying to, you know, just have a good time with her community again, and things are going extremely well. She went from 10,000 subs to now over 500,000 subscribers. So dope. So dope to see the success. Subscribers. Dude, every every time Niji Sanji fucks up again, they are literally driving people to support the person that they fired and hate the most. Every move and every moment they take, they are literally fueling the fire of their greatest adversary. <sighs> It's so nice to see. Her first stream back had over 100k concurrent, absolutely fucking crushing it. Yeah, that's huge. And last night during her stream, which was her first gaming stream since being back, she had to end it early because fellow livers, Alira Pandora, who had been quiet since the announcement of Selen's termination, yep. started a stream at the same time called... A message from Niji Sanji. Also, there is no way that's a co coincidence, right? The fact that planned the Niji Sanji response to go live the absolute moment that Selen started streaming on her own channel, like to happen at exactly the same time with no warning. I, again, this is tinfoil hat Nuxanor moment. They absolutely, a hundred percent, set that up to happen so that um, Doki Bird could get flustered on her stream and say something that they can take out of context and sue her with. A, a hundred percent they tried to slip her up and make her, her freak out on her stream. Uh, it, it's like a monstrous tactic, uh, and it's insane. It's insane. Like, they, if she would have gone on that stream and be like, well, what did they say? And react to that in person and get all emotional and personal about it and said something she regrets, they literally would have baited her into burying herself. And even if they would throw Vox and Elira Pandora and Ike under the bus, the three talent that they used as their mouthpieces to say this shit, even if they would all get thrown under the bus, it would have been worth it for Doki Bird to fall on her sword. No proof that they did this. But you will be hard pressed to convince me that that was not done completely intentionally. And during the stream, she was joined by other Niji Sanji VTubers, Ike, Eveland, and Vox Akuma. Both of them were thought to be friends of Selen or Doki Bird. And they read a totally not scripted message expressing how sad and betrayed they felt that Selin had given out. Yeah, and also, by the way, the fact that they, uh, they started off that saying, we wanted to say this, we volunteered to say this. Like, but the crazy thing is, when it comes to Niji Sanji, them saying we volunteered to say this could just be a lie. It could just be Niji Sanji telling them that they have to say that they volunteered to say it. Like real names and other required information about livers and her legal document that she sent over to Niji Sanji, and some of them stating that they had thoroughly read through it, as well as presenting Discord snippets between Selen and management. When... It was presented by them, thinking that it would absolve them. Now, I truly believe that Niji Sanji forced them to make this video. I Even think though they said they volunteered! I think that they were 100% pressured into making this statement. I don't think the VTubers chose this, nor do I think they really believe what they were saying. Wait, are they in Japan right now? Alira, Pandora, Vox, and, uh, and Ike, are they actually physically in Japan? Because if so, they're probably terrified of getting their pants sued off. Because... You'd, you'd have to be on some goddamn idiot juice to think that that was a good idea. Obviously, this is just inviting everyone in the community to throw tomatoes at you and scream, Boo! Boo! You stink! Just the fact that it's like a 15-minute video streamed on their channel where the whole chat was just spamming L's the whole time. Like, the... 
It is a terrible statement from them. And it <laughs> the obvious big problem here, one that Doki Bird also had to call attention to, yep. is they that they leaked their hermetical documents to other parties. Like, holy shit. That it seems Niji Sanji seemingly shared confidential information with these parties that are unrelated to the issues, which could potentially include her medical information. Which is fucking illegal. You can't do that. You can't just share this personal information. You can't break NDAs, and you certainly can't share sensitive medical yeah. information. There's protections in place for it, that. It's super duper illegal. It's more than super duper illegal. It's mega illegal, especially because she's in Canada, and Canada has the, the Pipida law, or whatever the hell it's called, that... Uh, that it makes it super duper illegal, no matter where you are. Now, Nichi Sanji's response to—I'm sure he's gonna get to it—but Nichi Sanji's response to this was insane. It was that, well, we we know that other talent was involved because you mentioned other talent, so technically that makes them part of the situation. So if they're part of the situation, then we could ta talk to them about it. And I know that we are not allowed to leak it, but they're allowed to leak it because you never told them not to leak it, which is like the most back ass words backflip mentality I've ever heard in my life. And the funniest part is, in my opinion, okay, I'm sure he's gonna say it, but the fact that they end their message with, we've conducted an eternal investigation and we've discovered that we've in fact done nothing wrong at all. Which is fucking awesome. Fucking great. That's a highly illegal thing to do. Meanwhile, goofballs at fucking Niji Sanji here were real loosey goosey oh, yeah. with Doki Bird's information. Con the CEO of Niji Sanji is just Lumpy Space Princess and no one knew about it. Confidential information, it seems. So I'll go ahead and play the clip uh, from Doki Bird when she learned about all of this. Um, despite everything that has happened, it I was very sad to find out a personal document that was only shown between three different. Dude, I'm so happy she was so eloquent about it and she didn't just lose her shit. And parties had to be. A, uh, leaked out, um, because it was a document I made for my lawyer, and it was a document that was not supposed to be shown anywhere else, but to me and my lawyer, and to the lawyer, to the lawyers on, on the other side, and we were promised it was not to be shown anywhere else. Because that's how the the stream started 17 minutes ago, and that video was out enough that everyone already knew what was what it was about. This is supposed to work in a fucking legal battle where you're not sharing confidential information with others unrelated to the fucking legal battle taking place. But I guess Niji Sanji, being the goobers they are, for some reason tried to weaponize that information by giving it to Selin's friends and. M most likely, I'll basically threaten Doxinger. All right, you're you're dancing around the freaking pony over here, bro. Everyone's walking around the fire saying "Kumbaya." They're threatening to dox her and release all this stuff to the public. If they, because they they also said that well, we're not going to leak it to the public, but the talent needs to know. And also, the talent is allowed to leak it to the public because they never signed that they're not going to do it. What does that mean? How many steps do you need to say that they're threatening that to leak your information? I'll, I'll say there's a. Oh, uh, we're not willing. We're just going to leak it with a proxy. Don't worry. High chance forcing them to make that video a message from Niji Sanji, which is a terrible video oh, yeah. it's so that bad. I don't think they wanted to oh, make because so they have to have known it'd be a disaster for them on a personal level. Like, they're... they're I, I wonder what's going on right now in, like, Vox's head. I know I know he's, he's not happy. I know he's in a very bad mood, that's for sure. But, like... God damn it, dude. Her careers are definitely taking a hit because of that. But it's, I feel like Niji Sanji was trying to strong arm them into doing it because from the sound of things- I hope the man's okay. Like, I don't want you to think that I have anything personal, like, vendetta shit. I think he was probably strong armed into doing this to a large extent. And I don't want to- Dude, I hope he's okay. Hope all these people are okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm messaging him. I'm just- I'm just scared. I'm just scared I'm going to message him and Niji Talent is going to see it and get him in trouble for- <laughs> Oh no. It looks like anyone that signs with Niji Sanji is basically just their fucking hostage for the entire time you're with the agency. Doki Bird went on Twitter to once again say that it was never supposed to be shown to anyone other than me, the lawyer, and any other relevant lawyers. It was a private document with personal information and then expressed concern wondering if her medical and hospital records were also released without her consent since that was also promised to be kept private. 
She says she's currently talking to her lawyer and thankfully only her diagnosis and reason for hospital stay was reported without further private info being disclosed. Bruh. So that's currently where everything's at right now. And Niji Sanji is bleeding out. So much so that the seat made his own little YouTuber apology video, which is trash. Oh my god, oh. it's so bad. It's the worst YouTuber apology ever. Dude, Logan Paul is needs to fucking he come out of the depths of hell. Bro, bro, I am not even exaggerating when I say the ukulele apology video is not even close to as bad as this one. I was going to play you Crazy. clips from his apology video, but oh, yeah. with Niji Sanji, you never really know what stupid shit they're going to do, so I didn't want to risk getting a... Yeah, I, I, everyone's been through copyright bullshit before. No one wants to deal with Niji over that. Strike on it for... Uh, Especially because Japan's copyright laws are so bullshit anyway. Covering it. So instead, I'll just go ahead and refer to the article here. One of the main things that he apologizes for off-rip is that after announcing the termination of Selen, there was a notice that was published saying that the impact this would have on the company's performance would be my favorite negligible. word. And he says that this was a misunderstanding and they just- <laughs> Oh they, my god, he made a whole video apologizing about the word negligible and then, then hyping up future events that Niji's gonna have. What planet are you on? Some whip out the ukuleles, ladies and gentlemen. This is crazy. Used inconsiderate word choice for it and recognizes that- Oh, she tried to kill herself? Sorry for using the word negligible. Anyway, definitely subscribe, leave a like, buy my merch, new 3D concert coming out. That Selen was integral to the growth of Niji Sanji English branch. Selen was good for business, so it hurts us just as much as it hurts you. <laughs> Oh my god, I can so see him thinking that. Selene was very good for our business, and therefore, I am so sad that this happened. Anyway, new concert coming out soon. And really, the whole thing more just seems like a statement to investors, uh -huh. like on a business side of things, as opposed to like a legitimate apology for anything that happened. To me, oh, it yeah. comes across as super corpo, soulless suit speak, like, yeah, we terminated Selene, whatever. Yeah, she almost tried to kill herself. Or the, that's that's well who cares what really matters is the investors not losing faith so we'll make this video to try and regain that investor faith so we can keep raking in those big bucks he Dude, where is niji sanji going from here where are they going from here promises like very vague things about change is coming we need better systems in place that we're working towards this and that but none of it really comes across as sincere especially considering that if you really wanted to make a good faith like strong stance like we need to change start with monetarily it's now come out that your talent gets fucked financially when it comes to their split on like merch sales and things like that if you really want to make a good faith like convincing compelling argument that you're going to change start there i would like to see that because you can easily showcase that one it's going to be hard to convey to the public that you're changing things behind the scenes because again that's behind the scenes it's it's always going to be something that the public's never going to be fully privy to but your merch split with your talent. Okay, that's such that a, is I feel like the merch split, like, yeah, it's true. The 2% shit, that's awful. But, like, that's, that's a drop in the bucket of horrible PR and, and contractual obligations. Like, you're right. That would actually at least be showing that they're making a step towards helping the talents. But that is nowhere near enough. It is public. If you allow your VTubers to talk about it, they can say, hey, look, we just got raised up a ton of percentage when it comes to our merch split. And we really appreciate that. It's a, it's a. We like to call ourselves philanthropists in these parts. We give four percent of the merch to the talent now, and uh, we want you to accept our forgiveness. Sign of goodwill, you know, and maybe things will get better in the future elsewhere too. But personally, I don't see them making any meaningful changes. No, and at this point, anything that they actually do do, <laughs> do do, anything that they actually do do is not actually going to help their appearance because everything that they do is like, oh, we're sorry that we were caught. Like, at this point, it's just gonna be, like, PR stunts and everything. Not that they actually care. Which is better than nothing, but, like... What are we even talking about? A crack or who fucked up already? Like, bro, dude, I, I don't see, uh... I don't see, like, a, an apology video with a ukulele and increasing the merch split to 4% for talent is really gonna help anyone see that Niji Sanji is, like, out there for the good of the people. To company culture or the way things happen behind the doors or anything monetarily, I just don't see them really doing a whole lot to improve and i think the community feels largely the same way which is why niji sanji they're trying to plug the titanic's hole with chewing gum and it's not working 
continues to fester here. Now, while they haven't fully gone... Mark my words, this is gonna happen. The core owners of Niji Sanji are going to be the core owners of a brand new VTuber agency that's gonna be starting in a year. Now, of course, the CEO steps down because he was a bad guy and he's gonna take accountability, even though secretly behind the scenes he owns, like, all that shit. Uh, don't worry, he's gonna step down. However, with, with the power of Bungie and Gum, they are going to put together a brand new VTuber agency that is going to be uh, really good and ethical, and they are gonna give their talents a 50% merch split. Uh, they are gonna be so good, they're gonna care so freaking much, you don't even know. That's probably what's gonna happen, and it's gonna be, probably be run by the same exact staff, just trying to save their name by declaring bankruptcy of some sort. Anyway, sorry to pre-watch reality, but that's gonna happen. Under or anything of that nature, they are definitely trending in a downward death spiral at the moment, where it seems more graduations are on the way, most likely, or perhaps even terminations to more talent, and the public is not super excited about the future of what? Niji Sanji English branch. What? Now, the English branch of Niji Sanji what? is just one component of it. Its biggest is still the, the Japanese, Japanese sector. Oh, yeah. But I have to imagine if the English branch flounders and fails, it's going to be bad for Niji Sanji as a whole because it's still Obviously, I mean, look, when I got into my VTuber drama and I got blacklisted by Niji Sanji, I was blacklisted to the Japanese talents too. A lot of people think that just because the Japanese VTubers are obviously streaming in Japanese and the English speakers don't understand them, and the English speaking VTubers, like the, the Japanese audience doesn't understand them necessarily as well, by the fact that there is that language barrier for audience. It is a very small company. Whenever there is an actual drama that goes on in either community, either the English speakers or the Japanese speakers, everyone is on top of it. Everyone knows exactly what's happening. I and I'll use myself as an example. I got into VTuber drama back in the day, companies and stuff, whatever, whatever happened. Japanese VTubers that I've never spoken to before in my life that had issues with their companies followed me uh, like a uh, freaking Rushia. Rushia got banned from Hololive. Her alt account immediately followed me. <laughs> like, and I never heard it. I never, what the hell do you have to do with me? You don't even speak English. But I'm just saying the, the actual communities are much more connected than people think just because we don't understand each other's streamers. It doesn't mean we don't follow what's going on everywhere. Also, any color lost 18% of their stock over the last five days, five days, 18% of their stock. That's not just their English branch stock. That's their whole fucking company going down by two, by probably a billion dollars worth in the last five days. Still was a sizable chunk of their company. Yeah. And that's going to affect that side of things too. So it's definitely something that they wouldn't like to see go away, I would imagine. But it's looking like it's going towards that direction. Oh yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to cover this a bit. Because it's, it is a huge deal and one of those situations where a company that was really at a point where it was probably too big to fail. Yeah, right, it really looked too big to fail. Like, even the way they treated Zion. And again, I was on Zion's side and y'all support her, okay? Go to Sayu, go to freaking Sayu's channel and support her. Spam Eggboy shit in her chats, okay? Freaking support the shit out of Sayu. She deserves all that love. But the fact that when that was going on and I defended her, I got so much hate. So much hate. Because the company couldn't be that bad, right? And I'm wishing the absolute best for Doki Bird going forward. Hopefully, the legal process she's oh, yeah. engaged in is smooth and an easy W. And hopefully, her streams continue to pop off. So, best of luck to her. And, uh, yeah, that's really about it. See ya. Oh, my God. I cannot believe this just happened. Doki Bird two minutes ago tweeted... Like, subscribe, and this video was streamed live on kick.com slash See you there. Stay weird, fam.